Good morning. Good morning, everybody. That sounds a whole lot better. Thank you for choosing to be with us today. We're glad to see your faces. Um, and uh, we are especially grateful that you chose to be with us this morning. Um, let's stand and begin our worship this morning in song and prayers to our Savior. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with loving zeal, the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, sin sick and sorrow worn, whom Christ the focused on um, the message kind of centered around that where John's going to preach on a message called unclean and it's kind of seeing people through the way through the eyes of Jesus in that we don't have different classes we don't have different um, images to him because God instead of looking at the outward appearance of man looks at the heart of man um, and we um, should see the same thing 
we should look at people the same way that Jesus does in a redemptive fashion. Uh, and these songs are kind of focused on that. And so I hope that you join with me in these songs uh, to lift our praise that we do that and we'd see people uh, in the correct manner that Jesus has said. He came to live, live a perfect life. He came to be the living word, our light. He came to die, so we'd be reconciled. He came to rise, to show his power and fight. And that's why we praise him, that's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. Bow down and worship this king Cause he gave his everything Cause he gave his everything He came to live, live again in us He came to be our conquering king and friend He came to heal and show the lost ones his love He came to go Prepare a place for us And that's why we praise him That's why we sing That's why we offer him our everything That's why we bow down and worship this king Cause he gave his everything Cause he gave his everything Halle, hallelujah, Halle, hallelujah, Halle, hallelujah, 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 and that's why we praise him, that's why we sing, that's why we offer him our everything, that's why we bow down and worship this king, cause he gave his everything, cause he gave his everything, Halle, this king cause he gave his everything cause he gave his everything please be seated good morning welcome this morning I have a sort of a special late breaking announcement to share up here in the handicapped parking right up against the building we have a Chevrolet Impala that's running out there. Uh, so we don't want your Impala to disappear while you're in church this morning. So uh, you may want to go on and see about that if you are parked in, uh, up against a building in one of the handicapped spots and uh, your uh, Chevrolet Impala is running this morning. So welcome especially to our honored guests this morning. People are moving to Granbury every week and we fully acknowledge that this could very well be your first Sunday to be with us. So we want to honor you and welcome you if you received a printed handout when you came in this morning, there is one side for our members to complete information and another side, if you're one of our guests, you can just complete that information, leave it there in the chair, and we'll have those picked up just a little bit later. Our Wednesday night diner actually resumes this week. So that means we're gonna have to get back in the routine of just indicating how many from your family will be at the diner. You'll see the menu for this week is gonna be pizza and everything that would accompany pizza. You can use the QR code that's on your printed handout, or you can simply put how many from your family on your registration slip plan on eating on Wednesday night. But this is a huge help to us in terms of planning, and especially since this is the first time back since taking a break over the summer. It really helped those who are making preparations for Wednesday night 
to make sure we have plenty of food, if you would indicate how many from your family uh, will be joining us on Wednesday night at 5.30. And then afterwards, we have two adult classes. One, getting to know the real Jesus taught by Calvin Warpula. Calvin's class was so popular, we had to move it out of the classroom and move it in here in the gymatorium. So Calvin will be in here Wednesday night and join him. It's been a really good class. We're two weeks into it. And then the ladies are undertaking a class that's going to be in the classroom at the very far back of the gymatorium and to my right, improving your Christian attitude, the ladies' class, at 630 as well on Wednesday night. So we have portable communion supplies, and they're right there on the shelf on the chair in front of you. If you'd like to grab that now and be prepared for communion. And then we have some receptacles if you'd like to place your contribution right here at the back of the building, or back of this room where you came in this morning through those double glass doors. Of course, we also have online giving available as well. Well, we've done really well with our shoes, have we not? Uh, Let me update you for those of you who are our guests today. We support a children's home in Anahuac, Mexico, in the state of Chihuahua, Casa de la Esperanza, the House of Hope. And uh, what we have done is to contribute shoes for the children that live there. They generally have around 50 students that live at Casa. And uh, do y'all think we've done well? It's really hard. You can't see unless you're standing up here. I mean, there are a ton of shoes up here. So two, maybe three weeks ago, I popped off and said something. I said, if we could take these shoes and stack them around the perimeter of the stage and they reached about waist high, that I would provide a 10-minute sermon. I think if we were to arrange those around here, it'd be past waist high, don't y'all think? I think you've earned your 10-minute sermon, so you're going to be really glad that you were here this morning. So I've got to demonstrate something. I am uh, wearing my Converse's this morning. If you can see, I'm wearing my white Converse's. When I started to first grade, we lived in Arlington Heights, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. My dad commuted on the commuter train to work in downtown Chicago. My parents were the very epitome of frugality. I think my mother invented the term frugal. But I recall going to the first grade wearing a pair of Converse's just like these, white low tops, exactly like these, on the first day of first grade. I was so proud of my Converse's. And don't we want the children at Casa to start to school having a nice pair of shoes as well? Because I I think a legitimate thing is for kids to have a decent pair of shoes to go to school in. If you've ever been to Casa, never been before, it's a a life-changing experience, and the ministry that we partner with them is really phenomenal. And it was a great excuse for me to wear my Converse's today, too, so I'm I'm really glad. You can also, this is the last day to give shoes, but you can give by check, or you can give online, and just mark Missions Casa School Drive, and we'll contribute financially in addition to the shoes. The ladies are having their monthly potluck dinner. It's going to be on the 7th of September, and all the information is there in your printed handout in terms of RSVP, and things of that nature. And then the parents of teens are going to have a meeting on the 10th. That's going to be in the teen center, and it's going to take place right after worship on September the 10th. We are planning on a longtime tradition that we've had of Back to Church Sunday participating. Back to Church Sunday is a nationwide effort, and it's just a very focused time for us to invite somebody. Maybe somebody hasn't been to church in a long time, or maybe someone who really hasn't had much church experience at all. So I want to encourage you to be thinking in terms of and being praying over who will you invite on September the 17th, which is Back to Church Sunday. I'm spending some time in the Gospel of Luke as we undertake a fall sermon series working through the Gospel of Luke. One of the things I encourage you to do last week is just just start reading Luke on your own. And as I mentioned last week, you may want to read four or five chapters a day. You may want to read one chapter, maybe just a few verses, whatever is helpful and meaningful to you. But just spend some time in Luke. Already this week, I've had several, several really good conversations with you all regarding your reading and how your reading is impacting your heart. One of the things I want to do each Sunday during our call to worship is just make reference to a passage that spoke to me this week. So this past week, I've been thinking a lot about Luke chapter 5, verse 16. 
And right at the height of Jesus' ministry, his ministry of teaching and his ministry of healing and driving out demons, Luke makes the observation in Luke 5, 16, that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. During the height of his commitments, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. I found it convicting because isn't it true that the busier we get, the more that our personal prayer time can potentially be placed somewhere on the back burner. So Luke providing that, that important detail really spoke to me this week. Where are you in terms of, in a purposed manner, withdrawing to a lonely place and pray? Why don't we pray as we begin our time together this morning? Let's pray. Father, we're thankful. Thankful to be together. Thankful to be together and to worship together. We pray for blessings, Father, on every aspect of our experience this morning. May we be reflective as we commune. May we think about the lyrics to the songs this morning and may... The gospel of Luke be especially moving to us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the loads of life unhated. I need thy strength to lean myself upon. Be with me, Lord, and then if dangers threaten, if storms of trial burst above my head, if lashing seas leap everywhere about me, they cannot harm or make myself afraid. Be with me, Lord, no other gift or blessing thou couldst bestow. Good with this one compare a constant sense of thy abiding presence where'er I am to feel that thou art near. What a wonderful blessing to have so many shoes up here. Um, it's almost relegating me to the recesses of the stage. Wait a minute, was that the point? Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you. So, just good job, y'all. Good job. This is fantastic, and, and what a great way to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to put shoes on the feet of those that Jesus loves. Uh, let's continue to tune our minds um, to gather around the table with the Lord this morning. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. Precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the 
cross be lifted up because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go, and reign with him through endless days, because he loved me so, he loved me so. precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I find a place to stand and wander at such mercy that calls me as I am. For hands that should discard me, old wounds which tell me come beneath the cross of Jesus. My unworthy soul is one. Beneath the cross of Jesus, His family is my own. One stranger's chasing selfish dreams now one through grace alone. How could I now dishonor the ones that you have loved? Beneath the cross of Jesus, see the children called by God. Beneath the cross of Jesus, the path before the crown, we follow in his footsteps where promised hope is found. How great the joy! of Jesus, we gladly live our lives. Good morning, church family. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie, when John got up first this morning, I was hoping he had on Crocs instead of Converse, but... We'll take what we can get, and uh, and keep it with John. If he's keeping it short, I'll keep it short. So we'll work together on this. Um, so when I was asked to do this earlier this week, I just quickly, uh, well, I'll give you the theme. So the theme of this week is how Jesus served, right? And so I wanted to go to my family. I have three boys at home along with my wife, and I asked them to give me each an adjective of uh, what first came to mind when, when they thought of Christ. And clearly one of these came from an adult. The rest will be children. So. 
the first one was kind. The next one was helpful. The next one was caring. And here's the last one, um, omnipotent. So, um, anyways, uh, I'm not going to give you a story, particularly this morning, about how I've served or how I've known of someone to serve. What I would like to do really is just challenge each of you, um, give you a challenge this week. Find a way to not only serve one of your brothers and sisters in Christ, but also find somebody in the community, co-worker, something of that, na- of that nature, right? I would love to uh, hear, hear of your stories in the future of how you've come to serve. So, uh, This morning's first scripture comes from Matthew 20, verse 28. And I'm actually going to back up. Uh, so this is when uh, James and John, uh, J- James and John's mother, actually asked Jesus if they could sit at his left or his right. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles, Lord, it, it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Would you pray with me? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Uh, Father, just as always, grateful that for this opportunity to come together as a family and to break bread. Uh, Father, I just ask that uh, you help us to be mindful of what this bread represents and the body that was shed on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name. This next scripture comes from Philippians 2, uh, verses 7 through 8, and, and once again, I'm going to back up just a couple. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. By taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, um, sorry, let me back up. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Father, just uh, once again, thank you for your son and the sacrifice he made and the blood that was shed so that one day we all have hope of eternal life with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 
Uh, this brings us to uh, blessing the contribution. Um, most of you, if you give digitally or online, um, if you l prefer to bring a check or cash, there's boxes at uh, either exits or all the exits around the church, actually. So, This last scripture comes from uh, 2 Corinthians. Um, I'm going to read verses 11 and 12. Uh, sorry, let me, I believe 2 Corinthians 9. Verses, I'm going to back up and read verses 11 through 12. Um, this is just part of uh, Paul was writing a letter to the, the house church at Corinth, uh, Corinth. So, You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we cannot thank you enough for just the blessings that you bestow upon each and every one of us. Um, God, just help us to find, find it in our heart and to give, give with a cheerful heart. Um, Father, just help us to take those many blessings you bestowed upon us and to uh, ensure that further your kingdom and um, continue to bless those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been doing something a little bit different the last, um, it's been a couple of weeks, I think. Um, and I know that some of you have noticed it because you've, you've told me about it and I love that. Um, but every once in a while, we'll slip a link into the email that contains the newsletter. Have y'all been checking that out? Boy, that is a still crowd and silent. It, man, man, woo. Um, it's the heat, I get it, but, um, but every once in a while, watch that because uh, what we as our worship leaders are trying to do is, um, I'm not going to call it a new song, but we're going to call it songs that are less than familiar because this song that we're about to sing is not new, but we haven't sung it in a while and it's going to be less than familiar to you. So what we want to do, the idea is that number one, we put something positive in your ears uh, throughout the week at least for a couple of days so that you can say, man, you know, this is cool. I can, I can listen to that instead of some of the other sewage that comes across your radio, right? Uh, but the other thing is hopefully you've got an earworm that you can have to say, you know what? Yeah, this is the one that we're doing and it's not unfamiliar because we don't want people to leave feeling like, man, you know, that guy that's up there, he just leads so many songs that I don't know and I don't feel engaged in worship. We don't want that. That's, that's not ever the intent of what we're doing. Um, so thanks for being good sports at that. And, you know, watch for those when they come across that email. Let's stand and sing the song together before John's lesson this morning. Give us a heart for the hopeless, the weary and wounded, for all who are hungry, helpless and poor. Let us see the sorrow, the pain and the heartache that all the
to the least of these. Let us be Jesus today. To the last, to the lost, to the least of these. Let us be Jesus today. Let us be Jesus today. Please be seated. Last week in introducing the Gospel of Luke, this took note of some of the individuals that Jesus encountered and those particular encounters that are unique to Luke's gospel. For example, even the most familiar parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, that is definitely unique to Luke's gospel. But our theme being a place for you as we spend some time in Luke's gospel over these next several weeks. So as you look back on the summer of 2023, that seems like it's in the past now, it's, it's in the distance. The summer of 2023, the students have been back in school for a couple of weeks now. We're back in the swing of things. This is officially fall, even though it's 120,000 degrees outside. You know, this really is the beginning of the school year. So what stands out to you? What, what unique event stands out as you look back on the summer of 2023? I know particular summers have specific events that stand out. Like, for example, I remember the summer of 1978, very specifically, because I got my driver's license that summer. That's a life-changing experience. But for me, we, we spent some time in 1 John, and one thing that really stands out to me, one passage, one verse, continues to stand out and speak to me. And that's 1 John chapter 2, especially verse 6. This is how we know we are in Him. Whoever claims to live in Him must walk as Jesus did. The morning I preached on this text, I made the comment, this particular passage, especially verse 6, has always felt overwhelming to me. How can we possibly live in him? How, how can we possibly walk as Jesus did? And so as I stood back and reflected on that passage over the course of the summer of 2023, I realized that's what our calling is, our calling is to walk as Jesus did. So I really think as we invest time in the gospel of Luke, not only in our Sunday morning experience together, but as you read on your own, I really think that Luke's gospel can direct such a walk, to walk as he did. We most certainly need some direction and some guidance, if you will. I believe that Luke's gospel will provide us such direction. So this morning, Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. I want to do something a little interesting this morning. I want to read the passage one time, and then I'm going to read it a second time with a very specific reflection or specific assignment. So just sit back and enjoy for this first reading, Luke 5, 12 through 15. In Luke chapter 5, he says this. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. And in the passage I made reference to and called to worship this morning in verse 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. In just a moment, I want to read it a second time, but here's what I'd like to do. I'd like for you to imagine 
You are in that town at that very moment. You're not only in that town, but you're in close enough proximity that you can see the interchange that takes place with Jesus and this man who was covered with leprosy. The disease had reached its peak in his life. And you're close enough in proximity as well that you can actually hear the interchange between Jesus and this man who is covered with leprosy. So imagine yourself, visualize in your mind. You are standing right there. You are literally observing everything that's taking place. So I'll read the text again. You're there. And as I read this text, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind as you observe this happening, as you hear what Jesus says, you hear what the leper has to say to Jesus? What what are you thinking? What is your response? And even more particularly, what does it do to your heart? As you see these events unfold, what does that do to your heart? You're right there. You are an eyewitness. What are you thinking? I'll read it again. What are you thinking? You're in that town at that moment. While Jesus is in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news spread about him all the more and the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. You are there at that moment. And so because you're there, and because you're living in your town, living in that time period, if you can imagine that as well, you absolutely know the consequences of living with leprosy. I'm not sure any of us in this room actually comprehend the consequences of living with leprosy and what that meant for them in that time period and that culture. So let me give you a little background, and that might enhance your visualization if I can give you just a little bit of background on what it was like to live with leprosy and how they had to interact socially. So here's what one writer says. In Israel, the lot of a leper was summed up in Leviticus chapter 13, 45 and 46. The leprous person who has a disease shall wear torn clothes and let his hair have his head hang loose. He shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. We can hardly imagine the humiliation and isolation of a leper's life. He was ostracized from society because it was thought at the time that leprosy was highly contagious. Moreover, for the sake of the ritual purity of the community, whenever he came in range of the normal population, he had to assume a disheveled appearance and cry, unclean, unclean. Think about how you would feel shouting this while entering a grocery store or a mall and the pervasive sense of worthlessness and despair you would experience. Lepers were typically beggars because there was no way they could support themselves. Sometimes their families deposited food in remote places. They customarily lived in bands with their fellow outcasts. By Jesus' time, rabbinical teaching with its minute strictures had made matters even worse. If a leper even stuck his head inside a house, the house was pronounced unclean. It was illegal to greet a leper. 
Lepers had to remain at least 100 cubits away if they were upwind and four cubits of downwind. Josephus, the Jewish historian, summed it up by saying, lepers were treated as if they were in effect dead men, dead men walking. So as you visualize being in that town at that moment, perhaps now you have at least somewhat of a better appreciation for what it was like socially to experience leprosy. And then, because you're so close, because you can see, because you can hear, you watch Jesus do the unthinkable because Jesus actually reaches out and touches this man. As one person said, Jesus touches him showing the tender touch of compassion and acceptance to a man who could not be touched by others. It was unheard of. It was completely uncharacteristic for someone to reach out and put their hand on a leper. He touched him. There's no telling how long it had been since this man had experienced basic fundamental human touch. And Jesus reaches out with that touch of compassion. So again, you're there. You're there within earshot. You're in that town at that moment. And you're very aware of the isolation this man has experienced as a consequence of the leprosy. And you quickly recognize his desperation. As I read this narrative over the course of this past week, I tried to, to, to formulate a word. What is a descriptive word that really portrays effectively what this whole story is describing? And that's the word I came up with, desperation. This individual is completely and totally desperate. And so you hear Jesus say to him when the leper comes, say, if you're willing... The leprous man says, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus' response, I am willing. And at the same time, not only is there verbal communication directed to the leper, but there's a nonverbal communication of touching him. I am willing. And because you're there, you hear Jesus say it. And you're a little bit blown away. You're surprised to say the very least at watching Jesus touch this man and to hear him say, I am willing. So if you're there, if you're in this town at this moment, you're never going to be the same. Can you think of life experiences that you've had and you look back on those particular life experiences and you think, you know, after that, I'm never going to be the same. And I think we can think of such experiences in very positive terms. And we can also think of such experiences in really discouraging and negative terms as well. But if you observe Jesus telling this man, I am willing and touching him, your life is changed and it is changed forever. You'll never be the same. Because if Jesus was willing to receive this man, then that means he is also willing to embrace your needs too. To Jesus who says, I am willing to this man who is dealing with leprosy, he is willing to embrace your needs as well. Jesus most certainly is not aloof or uncaring or lacking in compassion. I think we need periodic reminders. Sometimes we have this really warped perception of the very identity of Jesus. Jesus is not aloof, uncaring, or lacking in compassion. Now, sometimes at my house, I'm told that my red wires and my red wires aren't connected and my black wires and black wires aren't connected. Sometimes I'm told your red wires and your black wires are arcing inside your brain. And so sometimes I make connections that nobody else sees. So I made a connection on this passage that probably nobody else is going to see, but I'm going to share it anyhow. I couldn't help but make the connection to Jesus conveying to this man with leprosy that he was willing to this passage in Hebrews 4, 14 and 15, uh, 15 through 16. So the Hebrews writer says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, 
But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Just the very character of Jesus. And I realize not necessarily comparing apples and apples in terms of the man with leprosy versus what's being communicated in Hebrews 4, but the principle is important. And that's why I made that connection this week, that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence to receive mercy and grace in our time of need, regardless of what those needs happen to be. So after being in that town at that moment, you'll never view people in need the same. So let's think about that for just a moment. What are the people around you facing? And, and I wish I'd used a different phrase now when I say the people around you. I'm thinking people you're close to. People that you associate with on a very regular basis. Your family, your friends. What, what are people around you? When they're around you, they're, they're close. They're close in proximity. What are they facing? What are they dealing with? And what is your reaction to them? Are they finding that so many are unwilling? Are the people around them unwilling? And so as you observe, you're in that town at that moment, so it's rocked your world. You're never going to be the same, and so you're going to view people's needs very, very differently. And you're going to be reminded Jesus is not aloof, uncaring, or lacking in compassion, and you are not either. Is that correct? As you, you were there. You, you were in that town at that moment. You were there. And so he's not lacking in compassion, and you are not either. To say you are willing is to walk as Jesus did. Back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Our expectation is to walk as Jesus did and to convey to a person whether we actually choose to use that language or not. Maybe we use some other form of language. But to say to some person, in essence, I am willing. I don't know what you're facing, but I am willing because I want to emulate the very character of Jesus. Okay, y'all time me. How did I do? I think it may be just a little over 10, but I got pretty close. We're going to stand in a moment and sing an invitation song, a couple of reasons. I want to ask a couple of things. I want to ask you, are you willing? As you consider the needs of those around you, are you willing? And secondly, how will Luke, the material that you have observed in the Gospel of Luke, how will that direct your walk this week? So for those of you, this is your first Sunday with us. We do the invitation in a little unique manner here at the Granberry Church of Christ. One of the shepherds will join me down front. We do a traditional invitation in that regard. But additionally, we also have two of our shepherds who will be in this classroom off to my far right at the very back. It's a little more of a private setting. If you would like to seek out one of our elders who could pray with you or something that is more of a personal nature that you'd like to share, you just maybe just need a good word of encouragement. They're very supportive, obviously very encouraging too. I would invite you to take full advantage of either one of these opportunities during our invitation song this morning. Let's stand and sing. How sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord in one another's peace in light and so fulfill the word when each can feel his brother's sigh and with him bear a part when sorrow flows from high to high and joy from heart to heart when free from envy scorn and pride our wishes all above each can his brother's failings hide and show a brother's love when
happy souls of love, and he's an heir of heaven who finds his bosom glow with love. Okay, y'all turn me back on. Is that good? Oh, that's really good. Reba Kate has responded to the invitation this morning. In essence, what she conveyed to me, she wants to walk as Jesus did. She wants to be stronger in her Christian life and in her commitment to the Lord. And so uh, she has roots here at the church. Her parents worshipped here about 20 years ago. And uh, so anyhow, let's pause and pray for Reba. It's been a great Sunday together. Father, during such a time as this, we pray for strength and for courage for Reba. And Father, we pray for us. We have a grave responsibility to be an encouragement to her and to walk with her during such a time as this. We are so thankful that Jesus is willing. We pray in his name. Amen. Good morning. Well, there really are a lot of shoes up here. <laughs> we did a great job, but we can still do better. It's, uh, I assume it's still not too late to bring a few more. Okay. Um, as I was listening to John's lesson today, I guess before we leave, we could think about, of course, the man with leprosy and everything, but in any situation that we are in, just think about, remember the wristband, WWJD? What would Jesus do? I have to do that from time to time. And I'm embarrassed about what I do sometimes. So let's just think about what would Jesus do when we get into situations in this world. Reba, great to see you today. And we will pray for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day of life that you've given us, for the night's rest, for bringing us here together to be with our Christian brothers and sisters. Father, we thank you most of all for your son who died for us. Please forgive us all the ways that we fall short. Be with us as we strive to serve you better when we leave this place today. Help us to be a positive example. Help us to be Jesus to people around us. Thank you for John's lesson today, for the songs that we sang. We pray that we will glorify you in all that we do. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>